So I think we just start here again with the polymer synthesizer because we want to make some music. And instead of using the MIDI keyboard, we use here again the note grid because we want to um, generate some random notes in the grid. Um, by the way, this is here in monophonic mode. Voices are on mono, voice circling is off. And we want to remove here the note input. And we just want to generate random notes with the dice module. And this triggers module here, we want to generate eight, uh, eight triggers, eight equally spaced triggers within one bar. And this one gives us here some random values, right? And with this, we can already drive here with this polymer synthesizer. So it's pretty random. And you can also hear the notes are way out of scale. So we have like, I don't know, five octaves higher sometimes notes six octaves higher and so on so we want to scale this down by using an attenuate here and when we go down to let's say 10 percent we have only notes one octave higher and minimum one octave lower so it sounds like this so the notes are just you know within a certain range which is nice but now our, the notes are kind of chromatic, so we use the quantizer. So we quantize here this to the C major scale. And it doesn't sound like a melody because there is no repetition in there. So usually I used in earlier videos, I used the recorder for this to record sequences or I used the array to record sequences, right? Or maybe a long delay or a delay with feedback. So everything like this you can use, but now in 5.2, you can also use, of course, the shift register here, which is more or less to me, a sample and hold with the history. Uh, so we have the current sample and hold value always in the first slot. And the old and the last value you had in this slot is now in the next slot every time you trigger it, right? So we can extend this here to eight slots. And we can make basically create an eight step recorder here with this. So we all we need to do is go with the trigger module in here. You can see we already sampling values. It's a readout here. You can see here we are shifting basically or we are every time we trigger this we get a new value here and the old value is shifted here and this old value is shifted down and this value is shifted down so this is basically the how the shift register works um, we can also um, see this here with the trigger module right so here we have d3 and if i hit this button d3 goes here and here's a new value and this d3 goes here and this c3 goes here Right, so C3, D, D, A, okay. So this is how it works. Um, and we want to kind of implement here some record structure. So I use a select and I use a button because I want to say this is the record button. Every time I press this button, I switch it to the second input slot and this one gets here the triggers input and goes into here so I can now say record the sequence and then stop recording the sequence and then leave all the values in these slots. Um, to read out all these slots here I usually use a merge has also eight values and then I just connect these outputs with the inputs here um, and then I use maybe a counter here also eight slots or eight steps this goes in here this one goes to nearest interpolation and then we can just trigger this here and step through the sequence right so this uh, counter here creates more or less a stepped ramp signal it looks like this it goes up right every time we trigger this here it goes slightly up and then we, when we reach at the top the highest point which is our, our eight here then we go back to the zero value. And each of these points here in this 
stair uh, step signal is basically a position here in this um, in this merge module. So this is how we get the values out. So we can trigger here this again. So it's basically the same melody over and over because it uses here this uh, shift register and we don't record. So we can now use the record button here to actually update this melody. So this is how you can uh, record this or make a recordable um, random node generator. This is an easy setup, I would say. Here's a bit of randomization, then we scale it down, then we quantize everything, record everything into a shift register, read it out. Uh, but now we have also the freedom here to tweak this output a little bit. Um, so instead of just playing this here, this eight step uh, sequence over and over, we can make some modifications to it because we can modify here this phase signal and change the playback direction, right? So um, you could use, so this is just one idea. Um, you can do this in all kinds of different ways. You just can use here maybe a reverse, um, reverse thing, right? So this just reverses basically the phase signal. Um, looks like this. Um, this is the original signal, right? And this is the reverse signal. So it's just the opposite way. Um, then it plays back here the sequence reversed. So we can use here, let's say a select, um, select in. Um, so we just use here the first input and the second input is this reverse signal. Uh, maybe give this a different color and then go in here and then decide by, let's say a dice module here, if we actually use the real signal or the reverse signal. Right, it switches back and forth and then we get some random playbacks. But again, this gets too random because we have this, this dice module here. So in my opinion, it's probably better to use something different. Um, so my idea was to use just a curve module, a curves module. Uh, looks like this. So this one has here um, already a synchronized playback, so we can dive type in here bar and say we want to have two bars because at the moment we have an eight step sequence that is exactly one bar long, right? So we can do this here, one bar, go in here, reset and just emulate or simulate this um, yeah, ramp signal here, go in here, right? It does basically the same thing as before. Let's maybe put this here. So now we can say we want to make this two bars long. Um, so when we say this is two bars long, we basically stretch out this ramp signal here over two bars, which means um, this sequence is, is playing slower. But we can do something like this and say, okay, this is two bars, then this is one bar, right? So we can do something like this. So now we have the same thing as before. But in the second part here, we can say we want to play maybe in reverse, right? So play forward, play forward, and then in, in the half of the sequence here, we play backward, as you can see, right? Forward, next forward, stop, and back. So this is how this works. So now you can basically create um, a small alteration at the end of the second bar. 
I think we can also say this is now four bars long and say this is one, this is one bar, this is one bar, this is one bar. Um, let's divide this here even more, eight, something like this. Um, then we also need to re-trigger this here probably. And for this, I want to use a transport. And I dial in here, let's say one bar. And we have four bars, so I type in four bars. So we get here a trigger uh, every, every time four bars are ending or when you go back to the first bar. So we re-trigger the GOVS module. And then let's see how this sounds. And we probably want to use also the sample and hold. So now we can record here the sequence or record the new sequence. Now you can do something different here. So all I want to do is basically to make here the last the last sequence a bit different. Um, so a problem with uh, random node generation, in my opinion, most of the times is that you um, have a problem with the scale let's say we randomize here the node generation you get sometimes a lot of nodes that are not the root node as you can see here we barely actually generate um, the root node so the root node here also decides which kind of mode we are playing in the scale so usually c major is not only the keys of c major is actually not only c major it's also a c major it's uh, D Dorian, it's E Phrygian, or F Lydian, or G Mixolydian, or A minor, or B Locrian, and so on. So it depends basically what note we are playing for the first, or you know, what the key center basically is, what kind of mode we are playing. So uh, in my opinion, it's maybe maybe best to disconnect here some of the notes and give them um, the real root note. Um, so let's say. Um, want to play C, right? So we put here the C in the first slot. So we have at least a root note in there at the beginning of the sequence. So the listener knows, oh, okay, we are probably inside of the C major scale and, and not in D Dorian or in E Phrygian. Um, so this is something you can do. You maybe can also um, bring this in at a second point or something like this, right? to remove a bit of the randomness and make the listener more aware of the scale. So a C major scale is also the same um, or shares the same keys with A minor. So we can put in here an A and just make this more or less like an A minor scale. Uh, it's probably also nice to have here the dominant in there, so we can use a transpose. So instead of A, we always play here the, the fifth.
So with this curve modulator, yeah, basically I'm trying to get more out of this uh, eight note sequence. Basically we have, or we generate eight notes and then we play them back in a different kind of manner while trying to make it or keep the repetition so it sounds more musical, right? So this is the idea behind this. Okay. Um, so at the end here, I um, want to extend this to um, uh, this note generation here also for, uh, let's say, velocity. So instead of going in here with the pitch quantize, I also go in with the dice. Um, so I use a different dice module here. Let's call this um, velocity. Um, this is the same output. Can I rename this here? Yeah. Velocity. And then we do the same thing for, let's say, um, pressure or timbre. Um, this is the same input. This is the new one. And then we just connect here um, velocity with velocity. And um, what's pressure here? I think this is tumble, right? Yeah. Okay. So now we generate here basically. Let's record something. Uh, so we recorded here a sequence of uh, random values for for notes, for velocity, and for timbre, and then we're sending this out here. So here we can use timbre for, uh, let's say the index maybe, and we can use velocity for uh, the modulation amount here for the filter. I think this is a great way actually to use the shift register for node generation or for a step um, or for steps sequencers inside of the grid because you can just here record easily new values and then extract it with a merge module um, and then try to play around here with the phase signal to play these sequences back in different manners. Um, I think that's it. I put this patch here in the description below so you can download it and can play around with this. And um, yeah, try to leave a comment and leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.